Hey guys, welcome. In this video, I want to show you how to use and integrate Swagger with your .NET Core API. So let's start off by asking ourselves the question, what is Swagger? So Swagger essentially allows us to easily describe the structure of our, of our APIs. And the really cool thing about it is that it doesn't take more effort than just building the API itself. Swagger will create a YAML or JSON description of the entire API and with this, we can have beautiful documentation that is interactive and could be used by developers, testers, product owners, and much more. Swagger could also be used to auto-generate clients, and I will be making a video about this in the future. If you guys are interested, just leave a note in the comment section below. So with this, let's get started. So I have opened this notes that web API application in Visual Studio 2019, and this is a .NET Core 3.1 application. If you want to follow along with this exact um, web API, you can go to GitLab. I'll put the description below and you can clone like the same project that I have. However, if you have your own web API and you decide to follow with that, it should be 100% uh, fine. You shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. So it's really up to you um, how you want to follow uh, the rest of the tutorial. So I want to go quickly over how this uh, web API is set up. So there's basically only one controller and it has five endpoints, one to get all the notes, one to get a note by an ID, one to create a new note and we pass in a note, one to delete a note and uh, we just pass an ID and then one to edit a note and we pass a note. And when it comes to the models, it just has one object is a note, which has an ID and a value. And with this, we're ready to start integrating Swagger with our web API. Okay, so now let's go to our web API project and right click on it. In our case, it's notes that web API. If you're following along with your own project, just click on your web API. Um, and let's click on manage NuGet packages. Let's click on browse and let's type in nswag.asp.net core. And we want to go ahead and install that one. Accept. And we're using nswag because N nswag is a project that combines the functionality of Swashbuckle, which is the open API Swagger generation, and Autorest, which is the client generation in one tool chain. So now that it's done installing, let's go to startup and let's go to our configure services and we're going to type the following. So we're going to do services that add swagger document. We're going to pass settings. And then we're going to do settings that title just to put a title on it. In our case, we can just do notes. If you're following your own project, just you can put the name of your project or whatever title you want. And the next step will be to add the use open API to the pipeline and Add the UI and this is pretty much all the setup we got to do so let's now run the project so I'm gonna click on run it should build and start successfully here it is so what we want to do is we want to go to swagger hit enter and now the page should be up and this is looking really really nice so if we click right here models we can see that we have a model which is notes uh, notes I'm sorry which is the object I showed in the beginning of the video of the video and note has an ID and it has a value and it's an integer and this is a string now if we open notes we're gonna see the five endpoints so if, if we want to try it out, we can just hit try it out and execute. And we get a response back. Wow, Swagger is so cool. And we can try, let's say, post. 
I love this. Let's execute it. And we get a 201. I love this. ID 23. So let's try the get by ID. 23. I love this. And we can see the curl and the request URL and the response content type and all this useful information. And then we can even delete anything. And you guys can see how useful this could be to test the web APIs and just to have something so visual, right? Because let's see, let's say if you use Postman, you have to remember the URL to hit and this is a pretty easy uh, object, but in real applications with a lot more stuff, objects tend to get bigger, right? So you have to remember what the object looks like or look it up and then type the object and make the request. Whereas with Swagger, you get all this stuff for free pretty much. So this is really nice. And one more thing I want to show you is the actual, the actual Swagger JSON gen uh, generated file. And this is how Swagger generates your API. And right here we can see the path, which is notes. And this is a get, let's say, with the tag notes and it says the response types and this is a post, a put, and all of this stuff is gets written as a JSON file um, format. And with this, you can create clients that you can use in other services, um, which I'm not showing this video, but if you guys are interested, let me know because I can create a video about that. So we have reached the end of the video. And if you guys run into any issues or anything, just run in the comments and I will try to answer it and help you out. Um, like always, thank you so much for watching and please like and subscribe. It will really help me out and I'll see you guys in the next one.